Yes, sir. Are you ready in five, four, that's the right. four, three, two, one. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our Bible study. This is Anthony Moore. I am the senior pastor of Carolina Missionary Baptist Church. I'm honored to have you join me today as a part of the audience as we continue our Bible study. I know that you all have had a um, restful break and um, we've been very intentional about giving you that break. And so now we are back into the swing of things and I'm honored to have you be a part of this Bible study on today. Let me welcome our first and second time guests. Thank you so very much for allowing me to have a few moments of your time that I might be able to instruct you on the Word of God. Now, um, I've been teaching a growth track for our ministry over the last year, last nine months. I want to continue today um, teaching on that growth track. And um, today I'm going to be specifically dealing with make a difference. That's what I'm going to deal with on today, make a difference, make a difference. Um, I, I want to suggest to you that God has, as a body of believers, as Carolina Church, God has led us to give unto each individual um, four experiences as it relates to uh, growing nearer or growing in the Lord, four experiences. I want to begin today's lesson by dealing with that in terms of uh, making a difference. What, what have we gone over thus far? Well, God's given us the responsibility to grow the people of Carolina in four areas. Number one, know God. That's the first one, to know God. You can't do anything until we first connect with God until we first connect with God. So we, wanna, we want to know God, know God. Here's number two. Number two is get connected. I think it's very important for us to know that God determined, desired, and designed us to be connected with people who could benefit from us and we benefit from them. It's also important for you to know that meaning is most often found in the context of relationship. I'll do that again for you. M-E-A-N-I-N-G, meaning, is most often found in the context of relationship. So here's what we have. Number one, it is our responsibility to have persons to experience God, one, by knowing him. Secondly, to get connected. But then thirdly, to discover purpose. God created you on purpose, cultivated you for purpose, crafted you with purpose, and then called you to purpose. I want to also suggest that before you can discover your purpose in life, you must first be convinced that you are here on purpose, here on purpose. So we've got know God, get connected, discover purpose. Those are the three areas that we've spent the last nine months covering. On today, we start with make a difference. Make a difference, y'all. The purpose of life is to discover your gift. The meaning of life is to give your gift away. Come on. I need you to go ahead and pull out the pad, your pencils, and your papers. I want to be certain that you all are getting the nuggets that will certainly come your way. Um, um, make a difference, y'all. The purpose of life is to discover your gift. But the meaning of life is to give your gift away. Now, before we get started in today's lesson, I, I want to make sure that you, in fact, um, are prepared for what we're going to do towards the end. So what I want you to do, I want you to get a um, piece of plain paper or lime paper. It doesn't really matter. I want you to get a piece of paper, and I want you to number it. Um, from 0 to 110. I want you to number it from 0 to 110. 0 to 110. And I want you to kind of do it like, I'm doing, like, I, like I've done it here, where I have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, all the way to 110. 
I want you to do that and just hold on to it. And towards the end of the lesson, even on today, I will come back and um, work you through this illustration that I'm hoping will help us to seal what we, in fact, are trying to impart um, to you on today. Now, so then, um, know God, get connected, discover purpose, make a difference. Know God, that's about you and God. Get connected is about you and the relationships that God's placed in your life. Relationships, and even your church. No, get connected. But then discover purpose is about you and your gifts. You and your gifts. So know God is about you and God. Get connected is about you and your relationships. Discover purpose is about you and your gifts. Make a difference is about you and the people or team you line yourself up with to make a difference in this world. Now, the purpose of life is to discover your gift. The meaning of life is to give your gift away. Now, here is our scriptural objective and basis for our teaching um, for the series of Make a Difference. I want to give you the scriptural basis, the scriptural objective and basis for our teaching it's found in Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 13, verse 36. Acts chapter 13, verse 36, and I want you to see what the scripture says about David. There, when you get to Acts chapter 13, come on, get your Bibles. In Acts chapter 13, verse 36, you will see what our scriptural objective is and what the basis is for this teaching series on make a difference. Now watch this. It says, for when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, please don't miss that. When David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. I want to suggest to you on today that God has empowered us. He has given us abilities. He has given us Passion. He has given unto us unique ways for us to make a difference so that at the end of our lives, people will have benefited from your presence here on earth. We're all here on earth to minister to one another. We're all here on earth to minister to one another. God calls each of us to be agents of his healing in this broken world. If we're willing to listen and pay attention, God reveals unto us opportunities every day. With more than 7.5 billion people on the planet, God has chosen you to make a difference in your generation just as David did. So allow me, if you don't mind, for our lesson on today, for the remainder of my time, allow me to outline for you three areas, three categories where we are all called to make a difference. But then I'd like to also outline a list for you of those things that I do believe are stopping us from being the change agent in our generation, causing a difference to be made. Okay, let's go. The first category, the first category that you are called to make a difference in is those who are closest to you. There we go. Let's begin to put this in your notes, y'all. Number one, those who are closest to you, closest to you. Your first responsibility is not the world. Wow. Don't miss this. Your first responsibility is not the world. Your first calling is not to your community. It's not to your country. Your first calling is to those whom God has connected you to by way of family. Allow me, if you don't mind, to um, use the narrative of Noah to help me make this point clear. In Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 7, and I'm reading to you from the NIV version, NIV. In the NIV version, it says, The Lord then said to Noah, 
Go into the ark, you and your whole family. Now, I think it's important for those of you who are looking at this from the ESV version or from your King James version. If you notice, you all, in the ESV version, it uses the term household. In the NIV version, it uses the term, the phrase, your whole family. He says, the Lord then said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. God tells Noah to build an ark so that he and his family would be saved. Now, notice the why, though. He says, because I have found you, Noah, righteous in this generation. The difference that Noah makes initially has an impact on those who were, wait for it, closest to him. It has an impact on his family. Y'all, listen, this principle is not just with Noah, but it's all throughout the Bible, even in the New Testament. If you shift now to Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Come on, go with me to Acts 16, 31. I showed you Genesis 1, 7. I now want to show you Acts chapter 16, verse 31. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, it says this. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Now, Look at it again. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. It it, it almost will give you the impression that everybody in the house is going to be saved. But that's not what this verse means. It means that if you get saved, you're going to be saved. But that everybody else in the household is also having the opportunity to be impacted by your salvation. Look at it again. It does not mean, however, that if I'm saved, that everybody in my household is going to be saved. The Greek word for household is the word, you all, okios. Okios. It's spelled O-I-K-O-S. Okios. Yo, okios. It's the Greek word for household. Greek word for household. It's the Greek word for household. And that word there, okios, It's really talking about your sphere of influence, your sphere of influence. So the implications are, if you get saved, you'll be saved. You also have an impact on those who are closest to you, your family, your relatives, even your neighbors, those who are closest to you. You are called by God to make a difference in those who are closest to you. That's your first responsibility in terms of making a difference. My first line of uh, making a difference happens to be with those who are closest to me, closest to me. Let me give you number two. Here's your second responsibility in making a difference. The second responsibility in making a difference is for your generation. All right, let's go over it again. Number one, those who are closest to you. But then secondly, you have a responsibility to make a difference for your generation. Allow me, Malcolm, if you don't mind, to just um, define what generation means here. Generation, for the sake of our discussion, is defined as the times, the place, and with the people where you live. So rather than complain about what others aren't doing, You ought to become the change. You ought to become the one who literally makes a difference. Serve God's purpose in your generation. In your generation. Serve God's purpose in your generation. Uh, Listen, uh, open your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 15, if you will. Jeremiah chapter 15. Watch verse 19. I'm going to read it to you from the New Living Translation, Jeremiah 15, verse 19. Here's what it says. It says, you are to influence them. Do not let them influence you. Wow. You ought to make a difference in your generation. 
and not, and, and not allow the generation to literally influence you, but you influence the generation where God has placed you with the people and the places that you and the times in which you have been placed here, God has put you here for a particular reason, and that reason is for you to make a difference in your generation. Okay, let's go over it again. I am to make a difference, one, with those who are closest to me. Two, I'm to make a difference with those in my generation. May I give you number three? Here's the third one. The third place where you ought to make a difference is for God. Wow. I'm going to wait for you to get off the floor because I already know you're laying in the floor even right now. You ought to make a difference for God. Okay, one, those who are closest to you. Two, for your generation. But ultimately, I need to make a difference for God. Here's why. Because God is looking for people who are willing to make a difference. I, I want to suggest to you that God's literally counting on you. Let me, let me show this to you. If you look at 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. Come on, watch, get your Bibles, 2 Chronicles chapter 16, and be careful, I didn't say Corinthians, but 2 Chronicles in the, in the Old Testament. I'm going to read it to you from the New King James Version. This is what it says in 2 Chronicles. Remember, I said God's looking for people who are willing to make a difference. This is what it says. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In other words, you all, God's looking for somebody who is willing to make a difference. So, I've showed you the three areas where we are called to make a difference. Let me go over them one more time. Three areas that we are called to make a difference. One, those who are closest to you. Two, to your generation. But then three, for God. Now, let me outline for you those things that I believe, though, are stopping you and I from making a difference. And if we could be honest, we would have to admit that there is a great reluctance on our part. Great reluctancy on our part. Great reluctancy. Even Jesus knew that. Even Jesus knew that and understood it. He knew that there was a reluctancy on our part. He understood it. He, already, he knew it. I, I know he knew it because, because he, he shows us in Matthew chapter 9. Watch what he says in Matthew chapter 9. This is Jesus talking. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, I read again to you from the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Wow. <laughs> he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Few. Even Jesus knew that there was great reluctancy with all of us, that we're not just going to jump in and do it. We're not going to just jump in and do the doggone thing. He's going to have to push us. So Jesus said, I, I need to be clear that you all understand that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Okay, go to Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel 22, verse 30 this is what it says. I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. Watch this next piece. But I found none. God couldn't find anybody. He couldn't find anyone because there was reluctancy on the parts of his creation. Why would people say no? to making a difference. Why would people have reluctancy? I believe it's because of um, fear. I believe it's because of fear. Fear. Y'all, we are literally operating out of four fears that keeps us from making a difference in our generation with those who are closest to us and certainly for God. They're, they're fear. I want to I wanna outline for you four fears that are literally keeping us, four fears that's keeping us from making a difference. Here's the first one. Number one, afraid of the past. 
We're afraid of the past, afraid of the past. Whenever Jesus got ready to build his team, I think it's interesting for us to note this, that whenever Jesus got ready to build his team, he never looked for the perfect or the religious. He simply solicited every day somebody who was just an ordinary person because he knew he could do something with them. God knows your past, and yet he chose you. Wow. Did, did I need to do that one more time? I want you to get this. I said, God, he knows your past, and yet he chose you. He chose you anyway, even though he knew what your past was going to be. He knew what it was. He, he understood what he was doing. But God chose you anyway. He doesn't want us to stay in our past. He wants to heal you from your mistakes of your past. Listen, this is important for you to know. Your past does not disqualify you, but it qualifies you for the assignment God has for you. I need you to get this. I want you to see that, y'all, please, come on, please take this down. Your past does not disqualify you but it qualifies you for the assignment God has for you. See, many of us are too busy being stuck in our past and believing that our past somehow or another disqualifies me from being used of God. And I want to suggest to you that that is far from the truth. Your past, as a matter of fact, it qualifies you for the assignment that God has for you. Okay, let, let, me, let me give you this. Uh, please take this down if you don't mind. Your past is accurate, but it's not prophetic. Come on, please talk to me. Your past is accurate, but it's not prophetic. In other words, God, listen, my past is true, but where I'm going that God has already announced to the world and even to me, y'all, has it's, my past is not prophetic. I will not, will, I will not end up where I started out. My past is my past. All things are passed away. Uh, in Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Romans 11, verse 29. It says this, you all, for the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Come on, I need you to look at that. That's the King James Version. It says, for the gifts... And the callings of God are, not, are without repentance. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You are still qualified to do what God's called you to do. So in the King James Version, it reads, For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Let, let me read it to you from the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says it like this. For God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Mm. New living. I'll do it again for you, Rodney. Here it is. For God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Okay, you didn't like the new living. You didn't like the King James Version. Let me give you the message translation. Watch what the message translation says. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty, never canceled, never rescinded. Y'all, in other words, there is absolutely nothing that can disqualify yourself from making a difference. Stop hiding behind your mistakes. You have to let go of the past so it can let go of you. I'll do it again for you. You have to let go of the past. So it can let go of you. Your past will never let go of you until you step away from it. You are waiting for God to take it and, and he's waiting for you to step out of it and go make a difference. God said, listen, stop waiting for me to take, I need you to step out of it and go ahead and make a difference. Make a difference. So, so the first area, the first area that keeps us from making a difference is, number one, we're afraid of the past. Number two, we're afraid of the crowd. Afraid of the crowd. 
You, you're always worried about what people think. It, it's a good thing that um, Noah wasn't concerned about what people thought. No. Hey, Noah, what are you doing? Building an ark. What's an ark? Something that will float on water because it's going to rain. Rain, Noah? What's rain? Never heard of rain before. Yeah, but, but you will. I do need you all to know, for those of you who know the narrative of Noah, please note this. They had never seen rain before. The, 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 the earth was normally watered from underneath the ground, from the ground. It was watered from the ground. But this time God decided that he was going to um, water the earth, wash the earth with rain. Well, in that day, they had never heard of rain. Noah, you all, is seeking to do something that they had never heard of. Build an ark. What's an ark? Um, so that will float on water because it's going to rain. What's rain, Noah? You didn't know what, they didn't, they didn't know what rain was. But Noah had an idea. Can you imagine how the crowd laughed at Noah? Can you imagine how they made fun of him? Can you imagine how they threw shade on my man Noah? And y'all, too many of us are so intimidated by the crowd. God's calling for people who will make a difference with what he has given you. Okay, let, let me show this to you. If you look at, if you look at, um, if you look at Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs 29. Ah. Uh, Look at verse 5, Proverbs 29, verse 5. It says this, fear of man will prove you to be a snare. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Listen, if you're going to make a difference, you have to be more concerned about obeying God than about looking foolish. If you're going to make a difference, you're going to have to be more concerned about pleasing God, about obeying God, than you are about looking foolish. Okay. What keeps us from making a difference, Pastor? Number one, what keeps us is we were afraid of our past. Number two, we're afraid of the crowd. But then let me give you number three. Here's the third thing. What keeps us from making a difference is we are afraid of taking the first step. We're afraid of taking the first step. Let's acknowledge that the first step is always the hardest. Come on. Let's just go ahead and acknowledge this from the onset, that the first step is always the hardest. For those of you who can remember um, um, swimming, uh, going swimming, and uh, I remember even in our community, in our neighborhood, we had a, a community pool and we would go up to the rec center and want to get in the pool. And um, I always had difficulty because uh, I wanted to know how cold was the water. And so I would put my feet in first so I could try to um, acclimate the, uh, my body to the temperature of the water. But how many of you all know it doesn't work like that? I mean, y'all, I tried to put my feet in, then my legs and then tried to splash some water on me, but it, it really didn't work. What I had to really do was go ahead and just jump in the water. Just go ahead and take the first step. Well, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 says this. Hebrews 11, verse 7 says this about Noah. It says, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. I'll wait on you. I want you to see this. Hebrews 11, verse 7. It says, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. Noah took the first step in building what he had never heard of before. He took the first step with something he had never seen before. He took the first step even though he didn't understand anything he was about to do. And God's trying to get us to take the first step like Noah did. Listen, 
in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 through 12. The Lord wanted Elijah to take the first step. He says to him, go out and stand on the mountain. Look, look at 1 Kings 19, verses 11 through 12. He says, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. He tells him, the, the, he tells Elijah, Elijah, listen, go out, take the first step, stand on the mountain, and I want you to get a glimpse of the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then, the Bible says, a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart, shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And I want to suggest to you all that for many of us, we're looking for God in the gigantic. We're looking for God in the big. We're looking for God in the noisy. When he's really in the small, gentle whisper. In the small, gentle voice. I, I want to I pause here for a moment. I want to park here and put some money in the meter. And I want to tell somebody that God's literally been whispering to you and I through the Holy Spirit. God's been whispering to us. Ronald, he's been whispering to us through the Holy Spirit. He, the, the, he's said something like this. Don't do it. You are on your way to crossing the line. You're on your way to do something that's unethical. And the Holy Spirit is saying to you, don't do that. Or maybe you hear the Holy Spirit saying to you, um, um, by way of God, um, do it. Get in the game. Make a difference. God's been whispering to us through the Holy Spirit. I, I, I hear him saying to somebody, hang in there. I, I know you're tired. I know they're wearing you out. I know those children are wearing you out. I know you have had your share. You, you, you started in March with, 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 with in-home learning. And now you are in September and you're still having to do the same thing in this new school year. They're wearing you out. I, I know you don't have any hope. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying, don't give up, hang in there. So somebody else, the Holy Spirit's whispering, take the risk. I'm with you. God say, stretch out on me. I got you. To somebody else, the Holy Spirit is saying, apologize now. I, I know. But they were wrong. I, I know. But you have the ability to make it right. Go ahead and ask them, can we just get over this? The Holy Spirit is whispering to somebody even now, get help, get help. It's not just recreational anymore. It's, it's not just, y'all, recreational. It's, it's, it's an addiction. And it's time to get some help. It's time for you to talk to somebody. Because you can't handle this alone. Spirit is whispering, get help. To somebody else, the Spirit is whispering, slow down. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be able to survive running at this pace. Reduce your life down to the things that matters the most. <coughs> slow down. I hear the Holy Spirit saying to somebody else, there's more. Only part of you is in. There's more. Go to the deepest part of God. Go all the way in. He, you know, he only has good things for you if you can go all the way in. There's more. There's more. Let me give you this, this, this one last one. It's time. N not next Sunday. Not next month. It's time. Today, you can do it. No I, no, I can't. Yes, you can, especially if I'm with you. 
Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, you can do it. I hear the Spirit saying, you have to step out to find out. Because you'll never know if you don't step out. Let me give you the last one. Let me thank you for your time today. Here's the fourth reason that keeps us from making a difference. Here it is. We are afraid of failure. Afraid of failure. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, here's what it says. And be sure of this. I'm with you always even to the end of the age. In other words, he's saying, you don't have to be afraid because God is going to help you. Listen, I, I, God has sent me today to say to you, it's time for you to make a difference. Now, I asked you to get some paper and I asked you to number the papers from zero to 110. That's what I want you to do. I want you, I want you to get your seat of paper. And I want you to number, I want you to number from zero to 110. Zero to 110. I want you to do that, okay? I want you to do that. Now, in a moment, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to illustrate this for you, and I want you to help me right where you are in your own home. I want you to help me. I want you to get that piece of paper. I want you to number that paper um, width-wise from zero to 110. Now here's how I want you to do it. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on, okay? That's how I want you to do it. Now, what I want you to do for me with the side where the 110 is, I want you to fold it back to the year that you think you're going to die. I'm folding mine back at year 90 at year 90. I believe God's going to let me live to be 90 years old. I want you to fold it back to the year that you believe God will call you home. All right? I want you to do that. Now, once you do that, fold it nice, and I want you to just tear it off. Just tear it off. Tear it right off. Okay? Now, you just go ahead and fold this up Put this in your Bible, because that's me. I'm in heaven now. I'm with, I'm with the word. I'm with the word. I'm in heaven now. All right? In heaven. So from 90 to 110, I already know. From eternity, I'm in heaven. All right? But then I want you to go to the other side of that paper, from the side that says zero, and I want you to fold it back to where your age is. To your current age. Now, I said your current age. I'm not talking about what you want you to be, your age to be. I need it to be your current age. Because, you, listen, especially to you women, because you all want to hold your age at 30. No, I'm sorry. I want your current age. Go back to your current age, and I want you to fold it right there. Fold it right there. Just fold it. Fold it right there. And what I want you to do is I want you to tear that apart. Just tear, tear it straight down the middle. That age, just tear it. I'm 59, I'm 58, so I tore mine right there between 50 and 60, okay? Now, what I want you to do with that, that piece right there, just go ahead and just bend it. Matter of fact, you can ball it up, throw it in the trash can. That represents your past. It represents your um, failures, your regrets. It represents the bad choices you made. The messed up relationship. Just go ahead, throw that away. Just throw it away in the trash can. All right? Now, in comparison 
to what you had initially, this is all you got left. That's all. That represents the time that you have left. That's all you have left. In comparison to what I started out with, I had 58 years on this side. I went all the way down from 110 to 90, tore that off. And what I have left now is a glimpse of what I have left. This represents the rest of my life, the rest of my life. That's all I have left to make a difference. That's it. That's all I have. I don't know what yours look like, but I'm almost clear and almost sure that yours look just like mine. All you have left to make a difference is the amount of time you see here. Now, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we don't have much time left. God's called us to literally make a difference. What are you waiting on? Are, are you going to make that difference with those who are closest to you? Will you make the difference with those in your generation? Can God count on you to make a difference for him? Are you going to forever be stuck in your past, afraid of the crowd? Are you going to be certain, you all, that you, in fact, are, are, are afraid of failure, refusing to step out, refuse to make the first step? Listen, what will, what will it take to get you now to literally start making a difference? We don't have much time left. Let's do it now. Let me pray with you. God, for everyone who's listening to me under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will light a fire under us. I pray that your Holy Spirit will light a fire under us to get busy making the difference that you have placed us here on earth to make. I pray today that your Holy Spirit will touch our eyes, that we might be able to see clearly that, God, you put us here to make a difference. God, I'm praying for your hand of mercy. For every person under the sound of my voice who's listening to me, I'm praying that, Lord, you will arrest them Hold them in, in incarceration until they come to themselves and know that, God, we need you and that we have to make a difference. Not just with those closest to us, not just with those in our generation, but, God, we need to make a difference for you. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Now, listen, I don't know who you are today, but if you heard this teaching today, I need you to make a decision. You know what? I don't have a relationship with God, and I want one. I want to be able to hear God say, in the end, well done. I want to do exactly what David did after having served God's purpose in his own generation. I want to then fall asleep and go home to get my reward. If you, in fact, are looking for a relationship with God, I want to ask you today, click on that link that you see now that simply says relationship. Click on that link that says, hey, pastor, I want to be restored. If it, if whatever that link is, click on it right now. It's going to connect you so that you can take the next steps in developing the relationship or being restored back to the kingdom of God. Or if you're looking for membership, go ahead and click on that link now. It's going to take you to the next steps so that you can come to know God, to get connected, to discover purpose, but then finally to make a difference. Hey, my brothers and my sisters, 
God's waiting on you. I, I rebuke anything that's distracting you right now. I come against it. Go ahead and give God your undivided attention. I, I, I want you to go ahead and click on that link now and make a decision to have a relationship with God, to be restored back to God, or to unite with this church under membership. We're waiting for you. Hey, listen, I'm believing even now, I'm grateful to God that you, in fact, are being restored, that you are developing a relationship with God. I'm believing in faith that persons are getting saved even now. Well, listen, that's my time. I want to thank you. But before I go, I want you to um, listen to our announcement for giving today. I want you to give unto the Lord, whether that's an offering, your tithe, love offering, whatever the Lord's laying upon your heart, I want you to give. Hey, what, listen to this. Hebrews 13, 16 says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The greatest need of the world is the need to accept Jesus Christ. Do you know what happens when you give and sow into the body of Christ and His church? Here at Carolina, when you give your tithes and offerings, we're able to continue to meet the needs of our church, the surrounding community, and so into our local and international partners. There are four easy ways to give securely. Simply text Carolina Church, all one word, to 77977 to give instantly in less than 30 seconds. Download the new Carolina Church app, available in your app store on Apple or Android devices by texting Carolina Church app to 77977 or you can give by mail and send your check payable to CNBC to us at Carolina Missionary Baptist Church, 9901 Allentown Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, 20744. And lastly, you can give online at carolinachurch.org forward slash giving. Listen, thank you so very much for your willingness to give. I'm appreciative. There are several ways that you can do this, as you've already heard. You can do it by way of check, cash. You can do it by way of the, um, the Carolina app. You can do it online. However you choose to do, just know that the giving portals are safe. And we want to thank you for helping us to serve God's kingdom here on earth. Before I let you go, there are four things I want to remind you about. Four things I want to tell you about. Number one, I want you all to make sure that you vote, that you register to vote. If you, in fact, do not have the information for registering, you can go to our website, carolinachurch.org, or to the Carolina app. Go to your Play Store and put in Carolina Church, download the app. And on the app or even the website, there you have information, detailed information <coughs> based on how you can vote and be registered for voting. I want you to get that. Number two, I want to make sure that you have completed the census. Hey, brother, hey, sister, make sure you complete that census. If you need assistance with any one of these, voting, registering to vote, or even completing the census, contact our church at carolinachurch.org, um, carolinachurch.org. Call us, 301-265-8090, that we might be assistance to you. Here's what I want you all also to know. On September the 19th, September the 19th, we're going to have a guest therapist who's going to come and talk to parents, talk to parents who in fact are um, uh, dealing with children and even in that learning environment and you are at your wit's end and you want someone that you can, that can help you to um, uh, get information that will help you to become a better parent and to know what you're up against. I want to invite you to be with us on September the 19th at 10 a.m., you want to email us at carolinachurch 
info, info at carolinachurch.org and uh, get the credentials needed to sign on. I want you to be a part of that. Finally, um, we are celebrating 80 years of existence. We are grateful to God that God's kept his hand on Carolina Church for 80 years. Lady Cynthia is going to be leading um, First Lady's Tea with all of our women in our ministry and for those in the community who want to be a part of that. I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Go to our calendar on our website, get all of the information, and you be in the house. Put on your best hat. Um, they're going to celebrate in that fashion. Hey, listen, I need you all to know this. I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay home as much as you can. I want you to practice physical distancing. I want you to stay connected. Notice I didn't say social distancing. I want you to practice physical distancing. I believe social distancing is a trick of the enemy. But physical distancing will certainly keep us alive. I want you to stay connected. I want you to stay Carolina strong. Now, I've given you all some principles today, some inst biblical instructions on how you can begin to make a difference. You stay tuned the next week, but until then, on your mark, get set, let's grow. God bless you. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. God bless you.